Good morning and welcome to all of you to a very sunny Manchester. The sun always shines in Manchester, despite the myths put about by some of the southern media otherwise. Uh, my name is Tom Bloxham uh, and I'm very proud to be Chancellor of this great university and it's my job to welcome you all here today. Uh, the job of Chancellor is entirely part-time and ceremonial. It's not my day job. My day job, I work at a property company called Urban Splash. But one of the privileges uh, you have as Chancellor, which is the ceremonial head of the university, is to pick which of these graduation ceremonies um, I'm able to preside over. And it uh, gave me great pleasure to pick this one today in particular, and to pick to be with all of you today, but in particular, it's a very special one today, um, because we are able to welcome back one of our former students, Lisa Ronson, who sat behind me, who is the commercial director of Heron International, one of Europe's leading property investment and development companies. And it's a great privilege to have Lisa with us today, and a bit late in the ceremony, we're delighted to honor her with an outstanding alumni award during this ceremony. Um, the, the job of Chancellor is an elected role for seven years, and I'm actually coming right to the end of my tenure, and this is my very last ceremony I have the pleasure to preside over. I took over from Terry Leahy, who is the Chief Executive of Tesco's, who is the former Chancellor of UMIST, and Anna Ford from the BBC, who is a Chancellor of Victoria University. And I'm going to be succeeded, there was an election very recently, by uh, Lem Sisse, uh, who um, in the election beats Lord Peter Mandelson and Sir Mark Elder to take over the post. So it's, it's a special pleasure to be the very last one I'm going to do and to welcome you here to these amazing surroundings of the Whitworth Hall. Whitworth himself was an amazing entrepreneur. We still um, bear his name in the Whitworth screw threads. And it was designed by Paul Waterhouse and named after Sir Joseph Waterhouse, Sir jo um, Alfred Waterhouse, who also designed Manchester Town Hall and Natural History Museum. And his uncle was Edwin Waterhouse of PwC. So plenty of very clever people you're following, and I'm sure you'll follow well in their footsteps. I would like to particularly um, welcome all our graduates whose magnificent achievements and hard work over a number of years we're here to celebrate. And we're also pleased to see so many family and friends, and we thank you for your support and encouragement you have given our students during their studies, which is so important to their success. Just like their tutors and members of the staff in the schools and facilities, you can be extremely proud of what the graduates have achieved. And perhaps it'd be nice for the graduates just to turn to the families and thank them for all the support of getting them through here in the usual way. <laughs> Those of you graduating today are just decided to study at the University of Manchester, the same as I did actually some 30 years ago, and you made a decision to come here and make a major investment in your future, an investment that we hope will begin to pay dividends almost as soon as you arrived. During the course of your studies, you'll have gained the skills and knowledge to help you find success in future years. And although you may be delighted to see the end of assignments for now, the planning, the research, the writing skills you've deployed and nurtured to date will be of great value in the world of work, or indeed any further study. The way you have learned to balance commitments to academic life with other interests and the many competing distractions this great city of Manchester offers will help you find a work-life balance as your career and future unfolds. And of course, we must not forget the strong supportive friendships and relationships you have forged here, which I hope, like many of the people I met 30 years ago at university, will stay with you for the rest of your lives. Put simply, your achievement in completing your degree is truly significant not only for what it says about you, your own commitment and accomplishments, but for its value and the strong platform it gives you to build your career and achieve your goals. Manchester is already one of the finest universities in Europe, but we're determined to become one of the best in the world. Our ambition is to lift Manchester into the first rank of virtuosity in higher learning. And indeed, just during the last 12 months, a number of things we've achieved. There's been a new university cancer research facility opened in Withington. George Osborne, the Chancellor, announced a major new research and innovation institute in advanced materials, the Sir Henry Royce Institute. We received a very major donation from Lord Alliance of Manchester. Biomedical campus plans have been announced. The Chancellor came back again to um, officially open the National Graphene Institute. And the Whitworth Art Gallery, part of the university, um, uh, announced its grand opening, won the Northwest Building of the Year and the Art Funds Museum of the Year Award. 
and Manchester's enter the top 50 of the world reputation rankings. And uh, equally as important, um, we've dramatically increased our ranking in the Stonewall Workplace Equality Index. But it isn't just the bricks, mortars, wires, technology, equipment, and pieces of paper that make this university so great and successful. It's our students and our staff. During your studies, you have all in your own way enriched and helped to build and mold the University of Manchester to the tremendous benefit of those who will follow in your footsteps. Armed with your academic success, your skills, your breadth of experience, there is every reason to be positive about your future. Your job prospects are enviable because employers all around the world recognize the value of the piece of paper you will soon be holding in your hand. The degree you are earning today is very important, but it might not be the most important thing you take away from the university. You have hopefully learned lots of other skills. Uh, when I came here to study, I studied politics and modern history, but ended up in property development. Um, and founded and built up a company. But although studying politics wasn't particularly relevant, in fact, I uh, usually joke that the only thing I learned about politics is whoever you vote for, the government always seems to get in. I did learn a lot of other uh, life skills, I suppose. You get thrown together with all sorts of other people from different parts of the world with different interests, and you learn to get on with those. You learn to argue rationally and be confident. And I think that confidence is very important. I see two different types of people in this world those who think they can, and those who think they can't, and they're both right. So I would urge you to have that confidence, to have a vision, to realize where you want to get to, to start with the end in mind, because if you don't know what your destination is, you're unlikely to ever get there. And perhaps more important even than that is to find out what you enjoy, find out what it is that motivates you and excites you, and make sure that's what you concentrate your life doing on. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Um, because, again, my experience is it's the easiest thing in the world to go through your whole life and never make a mistake. You simply never make a decision. And the people that I've found who have been successful are the ones who are prepared to make lots of decisions and make a lot of mistake. And then be lucky and take chances. Um, again, the successful people i found are the ones who grab opportunities uh, when it comes to them. And persevere. Um, a lot of the projects, the complicated projects we've done, we were always told they'll never work. People tell you why you can't achieve things, but you just need that perseverance and determination uh, to go and get on. And if you've got any ambitions to um, start your own business, as I did, I would urge you to do it and do it soon and do it when you're young, because you have much less to lose when you're at a young age. And so many people go and work and get a very nice job and have all sorts of commitments and mortgages and kids and school fees, and it's much harder to start your own business. So any urge to do that, I urge you to do it. Obtaining your degree is a hugely important milestone, and you should relish your success. But I hope that this is the beginning of your journey in your association with Manchester, and not the end. And just like Lisa, you continue your association with Manchester, and we can welcome you back here. The return on your investment continues way beyond today's celebrations. Our career service continues to offer you hope and support for three years, and you continue to make use of our world-class libraries. The Alumni Association will help you remain in contact with the university, linking you with a community of more than a quarter of a million Manchester graduates living and working right across the globe. And um, I hope when you go out here, you'll use the, what you've learned at the university, not just for yourself, but for the benefit of society. When people became citizens in ancient Athens, they'd have to swear an oath that they would leave the city of Athens, not less, but better, greater, and more beautiful than they found it. And I hope the skills you've learned uh, over the last few years in Manchester will help you leave your town, cities, and countries a little bit better than you found them. So we sincerely hope today will not be your last contact with the university. And please remember that our doors are always open to you. Now I would like to invite Fiona Devine, OBE, to present our outstanding alumni award to Lisa Ronson. Thank you. Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, graduates, it gives me enormous pleasure to introduce to you the recipient of the Outstanding Alumni Award for 2015, Lisa Ronson. Lisa is the commercial director of high-end property development firm Ronson Capital Partners, one of Europe's leading property development companies. Her family has long-standing ties with the university, stretching back over 25 years. 
The Gerald Ronson Foundation, set up by her father, property developer Gerald Ronson, CBE, has been a generous supporter of the university. Lisa herself currently serves as a member of Manchester Business School's advisory board, counselling the school on its strategy and engagement with business. It is advice that she is extremely well placed to provide. <clears throat> Since graduating with an honours degree in Management Sciences in 1990, Lisa has forged a successful career in several sectors, first in banking and latterly in real estate, as well as developing and devoting a significant amount of time to charitable and philanthropic causes. She arrived at the University of Manchester in 1987 attracted by the strong reputation of the business and management courses, as well as its location, just far enough from home in London to avoid mum and dad popping up every month, she says. Business was in her blood and she was keen to make her mark in the world of work. Living first in halls in Fallowfield and then in various shared houses, she enjoyed student life in the way that most students do socialising, playing sports, tennis and rowing in Lisa's case, reading and studying. Lisa's final year thesis on the redevelopment of London Docklands was a sign of what was to come. Her plan was to get three or four years financial experience in the city, spend some time in New York and then follow her family into the real estate business. It's a sign of her focus and determination that has served her so well during her career that give or take a year or two, Lisa managed her to implement her plan to the letter. On graduating in 1990, she got a job at BZW Investment Bank in London, specialising in South East Asian equity sales covering the UK, European and US financial institutions. She spent eight years at the bank, including two years in New York, before returning to London in 1998 to take up the role of commercial director at Heron International, the property development business founded by her father. Heron has developed more than one million square meters of commercial and retail property and around 15,000 residential units in the UK, continental Europe and the US. This was no cushy job with dad, however, Lisa was determined to do things her own way. They agreed to give it 12 months and see how it went. 17 years later, I think we can safely say that things seems to have gone well. Lisa now heads the interior design, branding, marketing, PR, sponsorship and advertising for Ronson Capital Partners developments, as well as the leisure portfolio of Heron International, which includes major developments in Spain. With her family business background, her degree and her determination, it was always likely that Lisa would end up in business. But it's the University of Manchester she credits with helping her to prepare for the world of work. She is a great supporter of the university and has returned to speak to undergraduate students about both property development and the marketing sector. In partnership with other organisations, she dev devotes considerable time and resources to helping undergraduates from universities across the UK, including Manchester, prepare themselves for the workplace. She has placed many of our students into business placements over the last few years. Lisa also gives considerable time to a number of other charitable and community activities, including being a trustee for the following the Community Security Trust, the Gerald Ronson Foundation, the Development Board of the National History Museum, JW3, a North London Jew Jewish community, and Work Avenue, who assists and trains people back into the workplace. Chancellor, I present to you for the award of outstanding alumni, Lisa Ronson.
Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, graduates. I am delighted to be back here at Manchester University and feel very humbled to have been given this award. I left Manchester, dare I say it, nearly 25 years ago, well before many of you graduating today were born. What a horrifying thought. And my parents were here to see their eldest of four daughters and the first in our family graduate. I can't believe how quickly time has passed. Today, I'm back here with my very special mum and my lovely husband, and I'm very excited to be able to share this occasion with them. I remember my very first day here and walking at least three flights of stairs in Oak House Fallowfield with all my luggage and paraphernalia, insisting that my parents stay at home as I wanted to make this move on my own. In my eyes, I was entering, I was entering adulthood and gaining huge independence. But who was I kidding? My mother still called me every day to check up on me. And in those days, we didn't have mobile telephones. I could say I started my business life here at the university. But in fact, when I was a youngster, my father used to take me on the road with him, visiting his petrol stations. He introduced self-service petrol stations to the UK in 1966. And from the age of 16, he took me occasionally on his business trips to the US. However, when it came to trying to find a job in my third year, much to my father's dismay, I wanted to go into the big wide world and not join his business, but do something for myself. To me, it was important as an individual to start by carving my own path in the world and gain my own experiences. I wanted to prove to myself I could stand on my own two feet. And if I ever in the future did join my father, then I would have far more to offer than just being the boss's daughter. It was my time here at Manchester University which helped kickstart my first career and focused my efforts on obtaining my first real job at 21, when I joined the graduate program of a British investment bank, Barclays de Zoot Wed, today known as Barclays Capital. My degree, Management Sciences, has been highly regarded as one of the leading undergraduate business degrees in the country, which is why I chose it. And it provided me with the initial fundamental skills I needed to enter the world of finance. I'd like to say a huge thank you to Manchester for providing me with the confidence, support, and skills to make this step and achieve my early goals. The bank gave me a great foundation and basic knowledge of the whole industry. My area of focus, as you've heard already, was the Pacific Rim. And I also spent some time in New York, which I definitely recommend to anyone offered the chance to work overseas. But after almost eight years at the bank and following the collapse of the Asian stock markets in 1997, I felt my time in the industry had come to an end. And I couldn't just stay in New York because I had a very good social life. I needed to think about a career change, a very daunting task which I think, due to all the uncertainties in the world today, is becoming much more common. And in fact, is something you all need to keep an open mind about. What you plan to do when you leave university isn't necessarily what you will be doing when you are 30. But what you do do is start a new career with a different head on you, with more experience, maturity, and knowledge. Heron International had started to search for large sites in Europe 
to develop vast leisure, site, vast leisure centres, which I thought would be an interesting area to be part of. And as you've heard, I shook hands with my father, we signed a contract, and 17 years on, I'm still there. But the property world doesn't have many women in it. Sometimes people, I'm sure, think we're a hindrance, as there are few of us in the industry, and we like to be heard and taken seriously. Well, at least I know I do. And I needed to find an area or a niche I was going to be good at. I have been lucky enough to work on some extremely interesting and exciting developments. Over the years, we've developed a number of integrated leisure centers in Europe, predominantly in Spain and Sweden, with megaplex cinemas, restaurants, shops, health and fitness, nightclubs, and bowling centers called Heron City, which have had over 20 million people a year go through their doors. And in those days, I traveled so much, I probably did as many hours as most cabin crew. But I'm also fortunate to have been involved in some of the most exciting property developments that have been built in the city of London and which have changed London's skyline, including one of the city's tallest buildings, the Salesforce Tower, formerly known as Heron Tower, which was at least 15 years in the making. Today, I'm the commercial director of Ronson Capital Partners, an investment firm dedicated to delivering prestigious, luxury, residential projects in central London. A very different role than when I started at Heron, but even more interesting. I have definitely had a very varied career over the last 25 years, and that is not just from regularly moving from one job to another, but letting my career and role evolve to new areas as our developments evolve. As I mentioned before, I don't think it's wise to completely set in stone one's career path, as you don't really know where life is going to take you. But just to finish off, I have also learned over the years that whether it's my charity work and giving back to the community or my daily work, nothing comes without persistence and hard work. As Esther Lauder once put it, you don't get there by wishing for it, but by working for it. The little advice I can give you all today is, you must not underestimate the work needed to go places. It's important to knuckle down and get on with the task at hand. Try to be commercial and logical in your thinking and use common sense. Don't be too clever trying to take shortcuts. You get caught out. Try and obtain transferable skills and different for different careers. It will help you make informed, confident decisions. Know your facts and know your market. My husband, Paul, in jest at our wedding, mentioned in his speech that he feels, I quote, a bit like being married to a milkman. As I used to leave so early in the morning before our twins were born a couple of years ago to get into London and be at my office first thing. I lead by example as I have been brought up to do. And in fact, I have a small cushion in my office which reads, a career woman has to look like a lady, act like a man, but work like a dog. There is never a true word said in jest. Thank you, and thank you again for the honor of this award. Thank you, Lisa. Graduations are one of the most rewarding parts of my role, and I am delighted to see so many of you here today. It has been a real pleasure having you at Manchester, and we take enormous pride in your achievements. I am confident that following in the footsteps of our successful alumni, like Lisa, you will use what you have learnt here at Manchester 
to make excellent progress in your future careers and to make a positive contribution to the communities of which you are a part. Your success is testament to the significant hard work and commitment that you have put into completing some of the world's highest quality and most rigorous undergraduate degree programs. During your time here, you will have seen that we have ambitious plans for the school, for Manchester Business School, working to achieve the University of Manchester's three strategic goals of generating world-class research, an outstanding learning experience for our students, and ensuring we promote social responsibility and awareness across all of our activities. Today's graduation comes at a particularly exciting time for Manchester Business School as we celebrate our 50th anniversary. When we opened our doors in 1965, we were renowned for innovation in business and management education. Much, of course, has changed in the world since then, but our core aim of generating the highest quality research to enable and inspire the business leaders of the future remains the same. The last 12 months then have been especially memorable for MBS and I am delighted with everything that we have achieved together. We were pleased that in the research excellence framework results recognize that MBS has a strong presence in the business school world coming second in terms of research power out of 101 business school submissions. Our academic experts continue to be recognized across the world by policymakers, think tanks, industry, the media, and of course you for their outstanding achievements. I am particularly proud of your achievements and I was thrilled that three of our final year students have been awarded with the Outstanding Academic Achievement Award this year. And indeed another 11 of you have won the Dean's Award for Achievement. Over the course of your time here, many of you have taken the opportunity to make the most of our exchange programs and you have visited other countries and universities. You have been actively involved in clubs and societies and have represented Manchester Business School at the university at many competitions and events. The university placed significant emphasis on social responsibility. This year we launched business class with MBS working closely with local schools and as a result of that initiative, initiative 350 pupils and 107 teachers have received support from us so far. You have all played a part too. As undergraduates you were all invited to participate in JustFest, part of the Ethical Grand Challenges signature program and thank you to all of you who got involved and made it such a success. This year, you voted Reza Sela Jad as Undergraduate Academic of the Year, citing his commitment, enthusiasm, and ability to truly inspire. The nomination singled out his delivery of lectures with passion, flair, and love for his subject, as well as his great sense of humor. I am pleased to say that Reza will be presented with an award at a ceremony later today. I hope all of you will have seen the recent news of the substantial donation made to the school by Lord Alliance of Manchester. Lord Alliance has been an ardent supporter of the University of Manchester and MBS for many years. This history and ongoing commitment makes him a unique partner and it was in recognition of this long-standing support, as well as this landmark donation, that it was decided that the school will be renamed Alliance Manchester Business School from September. This donation will support the biggest transformation the school has seen since it was established, helping us pursue our ambitious global research agenda, playing an active role, for example, in the Northern Powerhouse debate, and by supporting the development of world-class building facilities, enhanced facilities for all of our staff, students, and alumni, and executive education delegates. Many of you will see that the building work has already started on our new executive center and hotel, and I hope that you indeed will follow its progress via our alumni communications. 
After graduating today, you will be in very good company as you will join our 50,000 strong alumni community based across 169 countries. So wherever your career takes you, you will never be far away from the support and advice on offer through local alumni groups. We are always keen to stay in touch with you and share your successes. Perhaps you may even return in future years to receive an outstanding alumni award like the one I have just presented to Lisa. There are many op other opportunities available to you after graduation and we continue to welcome alumni back to the school as speakers and guests. This year I was delighted to see that the winner of the Venture Further Digital Award was to Masters alumni Tony Sue. So I encourage you to take advantage of these opportunities wherever the, your career takes you. So congratulations once again to all of you. You have accomplished so much during your time with us and very best wishes for the future. Thank you. Chancellor, on behalf of the Senate of the University, I present to you for the degree of Bachelor of Science, Management with Honours, Qi Ying Tang. Ingrid Aarhus Skafter. Sana Akram. Maria Andreeva. Shreya Ashar. Ayansen Bay. Ashatha Bakesh Shamana. Karan Basel. Michael David Bell. Amy Blithin. Francis Buckler. Kathleen Burns. Max Cantello. David Carson. Wing Chan. In Yung Chang, <laughs> Tian Yuan Chen, <laughs> Alex Chesters, <laughs> Kei Ching Chung. Wang Chung, <laughs> Carolina Kamel Vesca, <laughs> Matthew Coley, <laughs> Lorenza Dominico. Ratan Darwan. <laughs> Josephine Laura Eccles. <laughs> Georgina Fletcher. <laughs> Ra 
Victoria Louise Fraser Young. Marissa Gallia. Ashid Garg. Ahmad Hanif. Thomas Hargreaves. So Jin Hyun. Sam Iden. Sadia Jabin. Yun Jae Jang. Yi Chen Jiang. Jiun Jung. Juhi Kang. Hyung Seok Kang. Sang Yong Kim. Dong Woo Kim. Connor Kirkland. Keith Chin on Kwok. Young Soon Kwon. Paul Leddy. Jung Hyuk Lee. Sungwa Lee. Hyeji Lee. Max Raphael Levy. Hu Na Lee. Tao Lin. Lulin Lin. Ariana Lucia. Glenn Matthew. Rodri Morris. Mohammed Matassa. Chris Murphy. Nathaniel Yi Ching Nyung. Lauren Claire Nuttall. Son Hyung Oh. Joanna Sabina Onofre. Anthony Thomas Orzel. Una Park. Louise Emma Pemberton. Adrian Predder. Craig.
Craig Robinson. Javier Sandu. Sydney Scrag. Anna So. Jennifer Jane Shaw. Moral Maroon Siddiqui. Anisha Sidhu. Sunil Sidhu. Kawai Sin. Holly Josephine Straker. Daniel Stringfellow. Gabriella Strug. Yuan Yin Tan. Grace Thompson. Nicola Ellen Meredith Thorpe. Alexander James Vanderbrook. Shuk Chi Wu. Chiang Shi Yin. Lucy Zaza. And in management, accounting and finance with honors, Arish Abdullah H. Al Hubai. Mohammed Jamil Mohammed Al Hassan Al Mudaifa. <laughs> Sahail Baba Ramati. Matthew John Barnsley. Gregory Jake Bauer. Yangbing Chen. Yate Day. Guobin Deng. Chiling Fang. Farhan Gauri. Simang Guo. Jennifer Wing Hang Ho. Jina Jang. Kuldeep Khanna. Taegu Kim. Sun Tuk Kwon. Guan Yong Ryan Lee. Z I Lim. Yang Ching Ling. Yin Yu. Mm -hmm. 
Xiaoxiao Lu. Kang Chester Lum. Hong Fei Liu. Nikita Malhotra. Shreyank Nahar. Matus Nazaresh. Puika Amy Ning. Maribel Adekalapu Odidina. Plamen Antanasov Papazov. Vishal Rana. Donway Sho. Xiao Wei Sun. Shiriro Sun. Ting He Thum. Timothy Sui Jen To. Meng Shi Wu. Yu Li Shu. Shui Yang Sheng Yan. Shui Jing Yang. Jia Xin Zeng. Huang Guang Zhao. Yi Shun Zhao. And for the degree of Bachelor of Science Management, Accounting and Finance, Sei An Li. And for the degree of Bachelor of Science Management Human Resources with honours, Fatma Habib Al Asa. <laughs> Shreya Karudhakad. <laughs> Karen Granas. Yi Xiao Huang. <laughs> Weibo Li. <laughs> si Jun Li. <laughs> si Wei Li. <laughs> si N Lim. Yi Ning Ma. Amy Elizabeth Moorhead. Megan Newton. Wen Ting Sun. John Nan Wang. <laughs> Yu Wei Zhao. <laughs> Anne.
and in management, innovation, sustainability, and entrepreneurship with honors, Amina El Hassan Iza Ali El Durazi. Maris Donnix. Adnan Gore. And in management, international business economics with honors, Surab Agawal. Gregory Keng Lung Ang. Oliver Ashby. Nicholas Bennett. Laura Belea. Stephen Cadlin. Joanna Cardoso. Eugene Hao Yi Cha. <laughs> Melody Zi Wen Cheng. <laughs> Ho Lam Chung. <laughs> Olawa Kinyan Sadi Ometera Daniels. Saba Da. <laughs> Mohammed Zubir Essan. <laughs> Charlie Edward Goodacre. <laughs> Margaret Grimsmo Vergeland. Daisheng Sam Ho. <laughs> Seon Young. <laughs> Liang Kang. <laughs> Shuya Kana. Ashit Khanna. <laughs> Katerina Katushko. <laughs> Brigitte Kiss. <laughs> Hui Ping Elizabeth Lee. Ada Leung. <laughs> Yu Ting Li. <laughs> Guo Liang. <laughs> Ching Yu Liu. Melanie Y. Yang Lo. <laughs> LL Lo Yi Han. <laughs> Camille Morrissey. <laughs> Yan Yan Mu. Richmond Potion Ong. Agarim Remmatulunin. Joel Seaton. Shibari Shanmugasunram. Ella 
Eleanor Soyland. Lewis Paul Stadden. Yuvraj Singh Verk. James Ward. Jing Yi Sha. Si Yuan Ju. And in management, international studies with honors, Monique Anderson. Michaela Davidson. Vladimir Dekovsky. Rachel Laura Emma James. Henry Connor Johnston. Angel Jung Kadka. Shiraz Kutar. Katie Sherlock. Jack Skilling. Jeremy Wright. And in management, marketing with honors, Oliver Carpenter. <laughs> See you, Chen. <laughs> Yong Chang Cheng. <laughs> Sarah Chosen. Chi Kwong Chow. <laughs> Mihai Rahez Kierba. <laughs> Georgia Dales. <laughs> <laughs> Reese Thomas Drew. Sophie Ellison. Ilya Grin. Rebecca Josephine Hall. Miles Higson. Nozomi Iwaoka. Inara Morrison. Liam O'Connor. Vladislav Pionkovsky. Samin Reiner Rahman. <laughs> ja Ren. <laughs> Marcus Wright. <laughs> Lars Rimstad. Simran Sidhu. <laughs> Lauren Todd. <laughs> Lauren, 
Dominique Sandra Topalwan. Nadia Valentinova Valkova. Kalina Slavova Valsaliva. Owen Walker. Shouting Way. Guru Ferga Vesteras. On behalf of the university, I once again congratulate all of you who are graduating here today on your excellent achievements, and I wish you every success and happiness in your future lives and careers. I now declare the ceremony closed.